Hey, and welcome back to LW Pharmacy School's channel. Today, we are going to cover the top 200 drugs, okay? So a lot of you all are struggling with top 200 drugs. I can understand your frustration and your worry and your nervousness, but to be honest with you, you don't have to struggle. There are very simple tricks that you can use, simple study tips that will help you to be very successful. And, um, you know, you don't have to worry about like trying to be perfect use things that work for you okay um if you've been watching this channel and if this channel is helping you please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and ring the bell okay if this channel has been helping you give us a thumbs up subscribe and ring the bell all right we're gonna go ahead and get started into our slide okay again this video is being brought to you by lw pharmacy school this is free Wednesday uh, or work it out Wednesday is what a colleague of mine says. So we're working it out today. Um, every Wednesday at one o'clock, we drop a new video to help you pass the PTCB or EXPPT exam. We are gonna get you, help you get your, your certificate so you can become certified. Um, so the top 200 drug word stem is a trick that is one of the oldest tricks in the book that has helped many people even before me remember the top 200 drugs okay so i have a couple of drugs here that i'm going to show you that's going to really help you and to make this thing simple now um drug class is antihistamine the word stem for antihistamine drugs is going to be astine a-s-t-i-n-e okay if you look here, the drug name is ending in that scene, right? S-T-I-N. Uh, let's see if I can be a teacher right now. S-T-I-N. There it is, right? We see it. It is used to treat allergies, okay? Um, it also, the I-N in it reminds me of the ending of antihistamine, right? Or antihistamine. Um, there's correlations here, okay? I-N-E. I-N-E, I-N-E. The word stem is A-S-T-I-N-E, but um, the allergy doesn't always, or the drug that is used to treat allergies doesn't always end in that, okay? So you have to remember too that just because you learn these word stem, it does, it's not a guarantee that every drug that is used to treat allergies are going to end in that particular stem okay and that's okay and remember your word stems can be at the front of your drug name in the middle or at the end if it's in the front it's called the prefix if it's in the middle it's an infix and if it's in at the end it is the suffix right um we also have a side effect of it is sleepy and it is not a control substance two through five so that's fine and there's no special notes for this one the next one is azepam Okay, A-Z-E-P-A-M. The drug name is diazepam, so here it is. We see the actual stem, right? Don't we see the stem? Yes, we do. Let's see if we can highlight and underline it here, okay? And we're gonna just put the M by itself. Um, and we have the stem there, right? Anxiety is what the PAMs are used to treat. So when you think about PAM, did y'all ever watch Martin? I don't know if y'all watch Martin, but Martin had a character on the show named Pam. And Pam was his girlfriend's best friend. And she was very crazy, okay? And so uh, she was just a funny character, very, you know, important, important part of the show, made it very funny. Um, so when you think about the Pam, think about the Pam from Martin and just think about anxiety, how she was just crazy and funny all the time, okay? Um, and so PAMs are drugs that are used to treat anti, or it's used to treat anxiety, which makes them an anti-anxiety, okay? A side effect of this drug is needy. The reason why I put needy is because there is a dependency that people can form when using anti-anxiety medications. They can become very addicting, right? And that is why it is classified as a Schedule Four because it can become very codependent, okay? Uh, cane is the next one, C-A-I-N-E. When I think about this, I think about raising canes and their chicken tenders. Oh my God, I love it. Um, lidocaine is a drug name, okay? And it ends in C-A-I-N-E, C-A-I-N-E, right? I'm gonna underline that. It is used to numb, 
okay, to numb a particular part of the body and to numb, you know, any area that may be causing pain. It is a, a drug class is local anesthetic. Uh, side effects is nausea. This is a non-controlled substance and there's no special notes here that we need to list. Um, the next one that we're gonna look at is antifungal drugs, okay? Antifungal word stem is conazole, like fluconazole is a antifungal drug, right? And everybody who knows what fluconazole is, it's also used to treat yeast infections. The brand name for fluconazole is Diflucan. It is used to treat yeast infections. Um, and it says drug use is a fungus, okay? Um, and it, the side effect of this drug is nausea, right? So nausea is the side effect of this drug. There is no control substance for this at all. Now, there's another drug I have listed here called Gusofen. Hopefully I didn't butcher the name too bad. Um, Gruselfen is also an antifungal drug, but I listed it because it does not end in the word stem C-O-N-A-Z-O-L-E, okay? Because I know I have some of you guys that are like, she's just posting all of the ones that go with the word stem. She's not showing us anything else. No, that's not true. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to be very real and transparent. Not every drug is going to end with the word stem. So you still need to know them. However, the word stem makes it easier to remember. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say this again. Please do not use your time to try to remember every drug name. You are going to worry yourself. You are going to really just put yourself in a bad place trying to remember everything, okay? So this is what I want you to focus on. Remember the ones that have the word stem. Let's focus on that. And then once you get that down back, then you can go back and list all the rest of them and begin to work them. But at least work on the ones that are easy to retain. This is about mind retention, right? And brain function. We want the brain to function in a very healthy way. And we want our brain to love pharmacy. Remember, we don't want to introduce this to our brain in a stressful manner. We want to introduce pharmacy in our brain as a very likable, lovable um, commodity, right? Because this is, you know, essentially going to help take care of our family, take care of us, meet our career goals, that sort of thing. So make sure that it's working for you, okay? Gruslefin is used to treat wing worms, okay, or skin fungus. And it should be taken with fatty food. Why should it be taken with fatty food, Lindsay? I am so glad that you asked me. It should be taken with fatty food because fatty food helps the medication to absorb quicker, okay? So if it, if it can absorb quicker, it can begin to work quicker, okay? Like fatty foods like ice cream, hamburger, french fries. And so the next one is going to be estradiol. Estradiol is a, the drug class is estrogen, okay? The drug class is estrogen and the word stem is E-S-T-R, E-S-T-R, okay? Estradiol is the drug name. Estrogen is the drug class, okay? And E-S-T-R-A is the word stem. Okay, and if you notice, you'll see estradiol here, E-S-T-R-A, side effect is nausea, and the special note is PPI. Whenever estrogen is being given out to a patient, we always make sure that they get the patient package insert. So that's like the birth control package insert, right? We want to make sure that any type of um, hormone that is going out to the customer, that they have that package, patient package insert. And the patient package insert is there to clarify any issues that the patient may have with this particular medicine. If you look down here at the bottom, you will see that I have given you something called a legend. I created it myself. It may not be the best, but whatever. Um, I've given you a legend, right? And I've done this because I call myself really like trying to um, do some abbreviations here. And I want you to understand and be able to follow me. So anywho, PPI equals patient package insert, okay? Uh, the next one is glitazone, glitazone, right? And hey, I may be butchering these drugs and we don't get paid to pronounce them correctly. We get paid to make sure that we dispense them correctly. So don't worry about the pronunciation, my friend. Hypoglycemic is the drug class that is used to treat diabetes, okay? Um, you will see that 
the G L I T A Z O N E is the word stem. And we see a drug here that has that word stem right here. If I can just highlight it. Yep, there we go. Okay. Um, oh, and we left out the E S T R A here. Okay. Um, it's used to treat diabetes, hypoglide. Okay, I want to show you this. Look at the class. The class is GLY2. Now, here we have GLI, right? I'm going to bold that. And we have GLI here. And even in the class of the drug is a GLY. And everyone knows that GL, that Y and I makes the same sound, right? So if you see that, that's also a little tip and a nugget to help you remember these drugs. Do not wreck your brain like you can do this. A side effect is diarrhea, and this is not a controlled substance. One of uh, special notes here is that with diabetic medication, kidney loss or renal failure could possibly happen. So that's something too that we wanna make sure that we list it here. The next one is aminoglucoside. Aminoglycoside or aminoglucoside is used to treat urinary tract infections, right? Um, this is the word, uh, the drug class is aminoglucoside. The word stem is mycin, M-I-C-I-N, mycin. Gentamicin is a very common drug. And if you notice, I've given you all generic drugs because you guys know what I've told you is that generic drugs is really where you want to put your focus. You want to remember some brands, but a lot of times what you will see on your exam is going to be the generic drug, okay? Um, urinary tract infections are treated using gentamicin, right? And the side effect of gentamicin is kidney toxic, okay? So it could, it could really cause a problem with the kidney and cause the kidney to uh, receive toxicity from that drug, okay? Um, and this drug should only be taken one per day, okay? It's very strong and it should not be taken more than one time per day. You're going to also notice on my side effects that all of them, for the most part, have something to do with the GI system, right, or the stomach. And that's because pretty much all of the drugs are processed through the stomach, and for the most part, you can pretty much guarantee that it's one of the side effects is going to be from the GI, whether it's nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, all of those are side effects of the GI system, right? They may even have stomach or abdominal pain. And so what I, my job is to make it easy for you, not to make it complicated, okay? If you can remember nausea as a side effect for a drug, and then if the next drug has the same thing in common, why not remember nausea? Why are we trying to remember nausea and then that this drug makes a person finger red? Like, no, don't make it hard for yourself. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. Keep it relatable. Keep it common. Like, hey, nausea is very common. You could take an Advil cold and sinus and feel nauseated. So I want to make sure that we are making pharmacy connect with your real life, okay? Um, we're going to continue on here. Top 200 drug word stem. Okay. Again, if you love this video and you like this video and this channel has been helping you, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. We post every Wednesday at 1 PM central standard time. Okay. So if this channel has been helping you, you want to go ahead and give us a thumbs up subscribe and ring that bell, okay? Uh, top 200 drug word stem, we're gonna continue. The word stem here is psyllins, okay? Psyllins is in the drug class of penicillin, okay? So we see psyllin here, I'm gonna underline that bad boy. We have psyllin here, I'm gonna underline that. Oh, and do I see psyllin? Oh, yes I do. I see psyllin inside of the drug name. So now I know that amoxicillin goes to penicillin. And what is the side effect of amoxicillin? Diarrhea, okay? Um, it is used to treat an ear infection and it may be taken on an empty stomach. Okay, that's something you need to know. Hey, I put pink medicine here because when I was a kid, I remember me and all of my friends had pink medicine at one point in time in our refrigerator and it tastes like bubble gum and we all wanted it. And so I just felt like you would be able to remember the pink med. If you haven't taken that pink med, um, somebody in your family have, and I'm sure you know about that pink medication, right? Um, the next one is thyromycin, mycin, okay? 
So thyroid mycin is used or it comes from the drug class of macrolides. Macrolides, okay? And macrolides are used to treat chlamydia, okay? Um, and a drug name that ends in the thyromycin is azithromycin, right? It's azithromycin, okay? I'm going to underline that and I'm going to bold it. It is used to treat chlamydia. A side effect is GI distress, GI stomach, okay? It must be taken with food. That's something you want them to remember. They need to take it with food, okay? The next one is O-L-O-L, O-L-O-L. Laughing out loud for the beta blockers, okay? If you don't remember any other drug, remember laughing out loud. Hee hee ah, you so funny. Laughing out loud, okay? O-L-O-L, high blood pressure. O-L-O-L treats high blood pressure and the category is beta blocker. Beta blocker, O-L-O-L. Got it? Okay, a side effect is dizziness. Okay, it gives you dizziness, all right? Somebody said, Lindsay, you give us a lot of energy. I give you guys this energy because I want you all to pass, okay? This is not a hard field to get in. It shouldn't be hard for you, and it should be fun while doing it. So, yes, I'm going to give you all the energy that you need to make sure that you are successful on your PTCD or EXCTT exam, okay? And if we've helped you to pass your exam, please drop a comment below and let the world know that LW Pharmacy School came through for you, okay? Um, the next one is, the next drug class is corticosteroids. steroids. Court to court steroids, right? Court to court steroids, okay? Um, the word stem is O-L-O-N. When I think about court to court steroids, I think about alone. I don't know why, I just think about somebody being alone. Um, but the drug stem is O-L-O-N. I am going to underline that here if my computer will be nice and friendly with me. Um, and it is used to treat lupus. I lost a friend of mine from lupus in high school. She was a very popular girl. Um, and it was just really, you know, a rough time. And so lupus sucks, just like cancer sucks. Um, but this drug is used to treat lupus. One of the things that you can remember about a corticoid steroid is that it is, it, causes weight gain or swelling. Most of the time when people are on steroids, they gain a lot of weight, you know, and so that's one thing you can remember. Another side effect is nausea, and I'm trying to keep it simple and keep it mixed up and, you know, all put together with this GI system so that way you can remember it, okay? Um, the next one is uh, ACE inhibitor is a drug class, and the word stem is PRIL, P-R-I-L, PRIL, lisinopril to be exact. Okay, that is the drug. Okay, lisinopril is also used to treat high blood pressure. Okay, you're going to say, really? What? That could be used to treat high blood pressure? I thought it was beta blockers. Nope. High blood pressure can be treated by ACE inhibitors. Okay, a side effect of this is dizziness. One of the things that the patients want to make sure that they um, do not use is they want to make sure that they avoid lithium. Okay, lithium can be very dangerous while taking lisinopril. Okay. Uh, lisinopril did have a recall a couple of months back. If you haven't seen that recall, and if you have some downtime, go and look at it. Um, a cousin of mine was taking this, and her face swell up so bad, her throat swell up, and it's just really common in African Americans as well as Hispanic population who is taking this medication who are re who are noticing these side effects. Okay, um, so check on your loved ones or check on yourself if you're taking this or a friend or a family member, um, because you know. If they don't know and you know, then you can pass the information on. And that's one of the things that's pretty cool about being in pharmacy because you can really be the first one to share information and really make sure that everybody around you is following directions and is aware of what is happening at that time with that particular medication. The next uh, drug class is loop diuretics. When you think about diuretics, think about fluid. Let, let fluid come to the mind when you think about diuretics, okay? Loop diuretics is used to treat fluid retention. What does that mean, Lindsay? That means that the body is retaining fluid, okay? And so these loop diuretics is used to treat that. Oh, cool. What is the stem, the word stem? S-E-E-S-E-M-I-D-E. -E -E. S-E-M-I-D-E -E is the word stem, okay? I'm going to underline that. Come on, computer, be friendly. 
here we go. And a side effect is low potassium. So if they're going to the restroom all the time, they're probably losing their potassium. This particular fluid drug or fluid pill is not a, uh, a potassium sparing diuretic. And for that reason alone, the doctor will probably prescribe them something to make sure that the potassium stays where it needs to be. They want the patient to take this drug early in the morning. And what, what do you think? So they won't be using the restroom all throughout the night. It's a fluid pill. So if they take it too late, it could possibly keep them awake, which would cause them to be groggy and unhappy at work the next day. And we don't want unhappy customers. Because remember, if the customer is unhappy with the medication, they will not complete the therapy. It is our job to make sure that our customers and our patients complete the therapy because we want them to get better. That is the whole reason for pharmacy. Hmm, aren't you smart, okay? Um, the next one and the last one is drug class. It's the last one for the session. Drug class, and it is called proton pump inhibitor, which is also known as PPIs. I know the other slide said PPIs is patient package inserts, but that is like, special notes. But when you're thinking about drug class, the drug class can be PPI, which is proton pump inhibitor. Okay. Um, and this drug is used to treat reflux. Okay. And omeprazole is a drug that is now over the counter. Okay. That individuals can use over the counter. And um, the drug stem is P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. P-R-A-Z-O-L-E. Right. I'm going to bold the spilling here come on computer love me love me love me okay there we go and anywho back down here i saw something i had to fix it sorry um but the p-r-a-z-o-l-e is the word stem and that word stem can help you remember omeprazole and some of the other um proton pump inhibitors one of the side effects is diarrhea now, are there any special notes for this Lindsay? nope no special notes um, not that you need to remember right now. And so just focus on remembering some of these word stems, okay? I've given you tonight 16 different word stems from 16 drug categories, okay? So you've gotten ahead of the game and you, if you know this, you'll know more than half of the drugs that you need to know if you can remember the word stem. Again, if this video has helped you, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell because we want to see you again. I like you. Let's be friends. Okay. Um, my recommendations for passing the PTCB or the EXPTC, people have asked me so many times, what is my recommendation? My first recommendation is that you book an online tutorial session with me. Book with me now. You'll get practice exams, secrets and tips to pass the PTCB and EXPTC exam. You'll learn how to build retention and memorization. We are going to focus on your weak areas. What are you weak at? What are you not good at? For some people it's math, some people it's pharmacology, for some it's drug laws. I don't know what it is, but I wanna help you. The other one is accountability. I will be your accountability partner. I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna text you. What are you doing? How are you doing? Are you remembering this? Is today a good day? Did you have a bad day today? Tell me about your experience. What is it that you want that you don't see right now? What can I do to make your transition easier? This is all about transitioning to the next phase, okay? Transition, transitioning to the next level. It's time to level up. You can do this. Um, resume help. You'll get that from me as well. So that way, when you pass the CP or the PTCB and the EXCPT exam, your resume is locked and loaded and ready to be sent out. So now the world can be introduced to the new certified pharmacy technician and you can bless the pharmacy, right? Okay, another thing I'm going to share with you too that I recommend is a study schedule. A lot of you guys do not have any structure. You're all over the place. You're studying chapter five, you're studying chapter 10, you're reading from five books, you're reading from two books, you're reading from four books. That's not going to help you. When you take your test, if you keep that type of behavior up, when you take your test, your brain is going to be here, there, everywhere, like Dr. Seuss. You don't want to do that, okay? You want to study from one book. All it takes is one, 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 one. Say that with me. One book, one book. The book is yellow, okay? There is a yellow Mosby pharmacy technician book that I recommend to everybody who is trying to study and, and pass this board exam. Um, once you get your book, if you don't like that book, that's fine. By all means, have it. Do what you want. Do what works for you, okay? But 
I guarantee you that if you pick one book, study every six hours for 30 minutes, one topic, you will have brain and memorization retention like, you, like you've never seen before, okay? Um, pick one app. I have my apps listed here. These are the apps that I work with. The apps that I give my students, they work with them too and they love them. So for the first hour or every six hours, so the first time you get ready to study, let's say you study at seven o'clock in the morning, right? 7 a.m. You're gonna pick one topic out of your book to study for 30 minutes, right? Okay. Then at one o'clock, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11. No, at 11 o'clock, because every four hours you're gonna study a 15, you're gonna study for 15 minutes, one app, okay? So then at 11 o'clock, you pick an app to study, okay? Now, this method has worked for my students. What we're doing is we're alternating resources. Have you ever seen, you know, if a kid had a high fever and they were trying to bring the fever down and so they alternated Tylenol with Motrin? That's what we're doing here. We're alternating resources, okay? So your sources is coming from the apps, which is very interactive, which is good for the brain. And then your book is coming, your other source is coming from your review book, okay? So alternate your study resources, okay? If you are using two books and you're like, Lindsay, I gotta keep my two, three books, do that, alternate it. If it works for you, I don't recommend it, but if it works for you, by all means, have at it, okay? If you follow the schedule that I've listed here, you will study 3.5 hours a day and 24 hours a week. Not only have you given yourself to it, but you didn't do it, you know, five hours at a time. You did it sporadically throughout the day. So that way the brain has something to look forward to, right? And so hopefully this study schedule has helped you. If it didn't, then you don't have to use it, but a lot of my students have used it and have been successful in passing their board exam, okay? These apps that are listed over here are all free, and so you can download them whenever you get the opportunity. If you have an iPhone, a lot of them are accessible. If you have something different, you may or may not be able to find every one of them, okay? Um, again, you guys are on the right path. You know, I tell you this at the end of all of my videos, continue to study, continue to believe in yourself, continue to push yourself beyond your barriers, beyond your comfort zone and watch how, what you do works for you. Okay. You can do this. Don't give up. I am here to help you. I've been a tech for 11 years and I'm still right here enjoying being a certified pharmacy technician and I love it. Okay. So keep pushing to it. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on yourself. You are definitely worth it. And when you cross that finish line, I'm going to be on the other side cheering you on. Okay. If this video has been helpful, if this channel is helpful to you, ring that bell, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It has been a pleasure as always to work with you and to serve you through education. I look forward to seeing you pretty soon on our next video.